What's up you guys? David here and today I've got another CD collection video for you guys. And today we're going to be going through S through T. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get it going. First up, we got Slayer with Show No, Mer Show no Mercy, uh, released in 1983 on Metal Blade Records, the debut album from Slayer. So Slayer is obviously a band that needs no introduction. You all know who Slayer is, and some of you, a lot of you hate them, a lot of you love them. You know, this is a very, this has definitely become a very love them or hate them band nowadays, and a lot of people nowadays just seem to love to hate them. You know, and partly I can understand the hate, and part of it I just, I don't really get, because while this band has certainly been disappointing to me these recent years, and especially now that they're, you know, they're calling it quits, and they're ending their entire career, and their, like, their final album is going to be Repentless, which was just, that album was just so mad to me, like, it wasn't bad, but, you know, they could do better. They could do so much better. I know they could. I mean, Carrie just can't write for shit anymore. Sorry. That's really how I see it. But, um, you know, Slayer used to be one of my favorite bands um, for many years. Uh... May, all through my high school years, you know, when I first started really getting into them. But uh, even though I don't consider Slayer one of my favorite bands anymore, I still love their early stuff. And I still think it's some of the best stuff to ever come out, even to this day, within metal. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of have a... <laughs> I kind of have a um, a love a love-hate relationship with this band at this point because I'm just so disappointed at what they've become and I'm I'm actually still going to see them perform their uh, final tour I'm going to see them in June uh in Cincinnati Ohio at the River Band Music Center um it's going to be them Anthrax Testament Lamb of God and Behemoth and I've never seen them before and even though I would have much preferred to see them with the original lineup um I, I might as well see them at least once before they call it quits. You know, I... Hopefully they don't suck and they play a good show. We'll see. Because I know they're probably going to be playing a lot of their uh, their classic stuff. And hopefully not too... Uh, ho hopefully not too much or anything, really, off of Repentless. And uh, hopefully as much off of Rain and Blood and Hell Awaits as possible. That'd be great. But uh, anyway, let's... Uh, I'm getting off track here. Let's get back to... The debut album from them, Show No Mercy. Um, it's a great album from them. Uh, it's really, um, you can definitely hear the Venom influence with this. Obviously, Venom was a huge influence on these guys. And uh, they kind of just took that, added the thrash, more thrash to it, and that's what you get with their debut album. Um, it's an absolute classic, and I feel like it's pretty overlooked, you know. Obviously, uh, I feel like a lot of the casual fans, they... They know, they, they like, they, uh, they love Rain and Blood, they love South of Heaven and Seasons in the Abyss, which all those are awesome, don't get me wrong. But uh, I feel like this and a couple others are really overlooked by them. But uh, Show No Mercy is an absolute, it's a great album. Uh, it's an absolute classic. Some awesome songs on here. You got Evil Has No Boundaries, uh, Die By The Sword, Fight Till Death, Black Magic, you know, uh, the title track, uh, Show No Mercy, Tormentor. Some great, great stuff on here. And even though they were just, um, you know, even though the musicianship, it's a it's a little sloppy here and there. Obviously, the playing's not as tight as later releases, but it's their first album. What do you expect? You know, it's, all, it's their most raw. Uh, just You can just tell that this is their first album. You know, a lot of bands, this is how they sound when they do their first album. But, uh... Yeah, one of if I had to pick one of my all-time favorite debuts from any band, Slayer's Show No Mercy is definitely one of them. So, yeah, Slayer, Show No Mercy. Sorry about that glare. <laughs> Alright, next up. Next up, we got Slayer with Hell Awaits, 
released in 1985, also on Metal Blade Records. As I've told you guys before, this album and Brain and Blood are two of my favorite albums of all time from any band. Absolutely fucking love this album. On this album, they crank up the heaviness a lot darker, and they just sound downright evil on this album. Um, Tom Araya's voice just gets way more, you know, like I said, just evil sounding. That nasty snarl really starting to come out. Um, Dave Lombardo's drumming is just a lot more pummeling and just in your face. And the riffs are just... Man. The riffs are... It's nothing but great riffs on this album. I could... Yeah. Still some of my favorite riffs of all time on this. Uh, but like I said, just a lot darker, heavier. Um, obviously, Dark Angel, I believe, I really think, owes a lot of their existence to this album. And I feel like this album is very underrated within the Slayer catalog. Although I will say, I feel like it has gotten a lot more attention over the years because I've read some recent reviews of it. And uh, people are actually starting to pay a lot more attention to it now. So that's good. Because um, I really do think this is, like I said, their best along with uh, Rain and Blood. I can't pick one over the other. They're both tied. You know, like I said, they're two of my favorite albums of all time from any band. So, um, yeah. You can't go wrong with this. Fucking awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, you know, you got stuff. You got the title track, Hella Waits. A lot, I know a lot of people complain that they, they think that intro takes up a little too much time, but I think that intro is a perfect build-up to when the song really gets going. Um, Kill Again, At Dawn They Sleep. At Dawn They Sleep, that fucking riff that comes into the middle of that song is just, that's one of my all-time favorite metal riffs. Um, you probably know what I mean if you've heard the song. At Dawn They Sleep is definitely one of my all-time favorites from them. I hope they play that when I go to see them. That would be nice. Um, yeah, Necrophiliac, Crips of Eternity. I'm naming off the whole fucking album here because, you know, from beginning to end, this is a solid, solid album. If you are a thrash metal fan and you don't own this, you're doing something wrong, man. So yeah, Slayer, Hell Awaits, fucking killer. Next up. We got Slayer's Haunting the Chapel EP, also on Metal Blade Records, also released in 1985. This is just an EP that contains four tracks, but uh, it's definitely not one that you should skip over, and it is worth your time, because uh, Chemical Warfare, Captor of Sin, and Haunting the Chapel are all really, really cool tracks from them. You're missing on some great songs if you don't check this out. So uh, that's really all there is to say about that. It pretty much has that continued sound, that mixture of Show No Mercy and Hell Awaits, on here um yeah slayer haunting the chapel great ep next up we got slayer live undead um also released in 1985 um i think i'm still not sure uh the correct info about this i hear like it's a faked live album, it's not live at all, or they just did it with, like, a very small audience in the studio or something when they recorded this. I don't really know, but, um, it's still pretty cool. Um, you know, it's just, uh, honestly, it's just something I wanted to add to the, my Slayer collection. But, um, yeah, if any of these are truly live, it, it sounds pretty good, you know. Um, it's mainly just stuff from, uh, it's just stuff from Show No Mercy and the Haunting the Chapel EP on here. So, yeah. Live Undead. Next up, we got Slayer with Rain and Blood, released in 1986. Um, I shouldn't have to talk about this. You all know this album. Slayer, Rain and Blood. <laughs> An absolute thrash classic. And, like I said, in my opinion... Still one of the all-time greatest metal albums, and in my mind, it always will be. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. Angel of Death, Altar of Sacrifice, Jesus Saves, excuse me, Crim Criminally Insane, Piece by Piece. A short album, but no time, not a single second is wasted. Fucking awesome. Slayer, Rain and Blood. 
Next up, we got South of Heaven, released in 1988. Um, they slow they slow things down a bit compared to Rain and Blood, but uh, it's still an awesome, awesome album. Like I said, it's classic Slayer. Cannot go wrong with the classic Slayer stuff. Um, let's see. What else can I really say? Um, I mean... Eh, I can't really think of much more to add to it. I mean, it's... It's really hard for me to really add, to talk about these too much, because, I mean, what can I really say that hasn't been said already about this stuff, you know? Slayer, South of Heaven. Standout tracks, you got the title track, South of Heaven, Silent Scream, Ghosts of War, Behind the Crooked Cross, Spill the Blood. Yeah, Slayer, South of Heaven. Next up. We got Slayer with Seasons in the Abyss, released in 1990. Um, again, another solid album from them. Um, yeah. <laughs> again, not really too much I can say about it because it pretty much just continues um, where they left off from South of Heaven, you know? Just great thrash metal. An absolute classic. Uh, some... Standout tracks from this, you got War Ensemble, you got uh, Dead Skin Mask, Skeletons of Society, um, the title track, Seasons in the Abyss again. The title tracks just, that's, you know, that's just how it goes. It, they do tend to be uh, some of the standouts. But uh, yeah, Slayer, Seasons in the Abyss. And moving uh, up a couple years, I do not own Divine Intervention, although I do think that album's pretty good. Um, maybe I'll get it someday. I do not own Diabolic Musica. That album can fuck off. I'm not a fan of it at all. Um, so, uh, and what's, uh, what's the other one? Oh, God Hates Us All. God Hates Us All, I'm not crazy about. It's got its moments, but I don't know if I like it enough to own it. Maybe I'll still pick it up someday just to add it to the collection. But we're moving on to 2006 with Christ Delusion. And this was basically kind of... Uh, kind of like a comeback for him. You know, this is when Dave Lombardo came back into the fold and joined the band. And um, I really enjoyed this album. Uh, I know some people didn't like it, but I was pretty happy with it. You know, uh, it's nowhere near as good as any of the classic Slayer stuff. But... Uh, as far as the modern Slayer albums go, it's definitely one of the best, especially compared to what they would turn into later. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good. Slayer, Christ Illusion. Uh, some standout tracks for this. We got Skeleton Christ, Eyes of the Insane, Catatonic, Flesh Storm. Still got some awesome, vicious riffs on here. And, uh, yeah, pretty good. Slayer, Christ Illusion. Next up, we move on to World Painted Blood, released in 2009. Now this is where I was starting to get, I was starting to like the band just a little bit less. Although I do think this is mostly a good album, there are some songs on here that I do not care for. I think Americon is definitely the worst song on here. I was not a fan of that. It just, it gave off too much of like a Slipknot kind of vibe. And while I think Slipknot is okay still, Slayer don't need to sound like Slipknot. They need to sound like Slayer. That's the problem with that. So, uh, Americon, I did not like at all. Um, playing with Dolls, I wasn't too crazy about. Human Strain, again. There's, uh, but some great songs, like the title track, World Painted Blood, Unit 731, um, let's see, Public Display of Dismemberment, Hate Worldwide, uh, not of this god. You still got some really good uh, thrash songs on here and some great riffs, but um, you know, there are definitely some duds for the tracks on this one. But uh, like I said, it's a mostly good album. So uh, yeah, not too much else to say about this one. Um, if you haven't heard it, check it out. It's pretty good as far as the modern Slayer stuff goes, and uh, it's a hell of a lot better than their fucking latest, Repentless. <laughs> I can't get over just how meh that album was, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah. Slayer, World Painted Blood. That's it for the Slayer, guys.
Next up, we got Spectral Voice with Eroded Corridors of Unbeing. This was this came out last year, and this was part of my 2017 pick up this video, so I already talked about this. But uh, this album is absolutely fucking incredible. This is definitely one of the best, uh, one of my favorite uh, Death Doom bands going today, along with Hooded Menace and Coffins and a few others. Um, if you like Disembowelment, you just fucking buy this. And that's not to say these guys are a Disembowelment clone, but obviously Disembowelment was a huge, huge influence on these guys. So, uh, yeah. If you like your Death Doom, absolutely just as dark as possible, fucking crushing, heavy. Uh, yeah. You can't go wrong with Spectre Voice. Keep an eye out for these guys. And, uh, you know, they're on Dark Descent. Dark Descent can do no fucking wrong. Everything that label puts out is fucking gold, in my opinion. So yeah, Spectral Voice, Erota Corridors of Unbeing. Fucking amazing. Next up, we got S.O.D. with Speak English or Die. This is the side project from Scott Ian and Frank... No, my bad. Charlie Bonante and Scott Ian. Uh, released in... I think this is 87... From, uh, the year's not ahead, but I'm pretty sure this is 87. Uh, a mixer of, like, crossover and thrash, or like, I guess you could just say it's crossover thrash. Um, I haven't listened to this in a long time, but uh, it's pretty good stuff. You know, if you like your uh, thrash with a bit of humor, you know, but still some awesome, catchy, great riffs, uh, you know, check it out if you uh, haven't heard of them. But uh, most classic thrash fans, you probably do know about this. So, uh, that's S.O.D. Speak English or Die. Next up, we got Testament with The Legacy, released in 1987 on Atlantic Records. Uh, the debut album from Testament. Testament, uh, I shouldn't have to explain too much about these guys. You guys should know them. Very, uh, very solid thrash from the Bay Area, and, uh, even the stuff they're putting out now is, uh, fucking great. Can't wait to go see them live in June. But, um, yeah, this is an absolute classic. You guys should know it, and I'm sure you do. Um, some standout tracks. You got Over the Wall. You know, that's definitely the most well-known song from this. They had a music video for that. Uh, Curse of the Legions of Death. First Strike is Deadly. Do or Die. Yeah. Great, great album from Testament. And, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what my favorite testament album is and this is definitely the one that i started with because it was the one that i uh that i was reading about online everyone said you should start with this one if you're getting into testament but i feel like you can go with any of the first three albums to start off with them or hell you could even go with the uh the more recent stuff to start out with testament they've never done a bad album really um they've done some albums that were just decent and not, like, great or amazing, but they've never done a bad album by any means. But, uh, yeah. The Legacy is an absolute thrash classic. Next up, we got Testament again with The New Order, released in 1988, also on Atlantic. And, uh, again, you know, continuing in that direction from The Legacy. Very similar production style, sound, and everything. Um... Yeah, just solid, solid thrash metal, again, from Testament on their second uh, record. Um, some standout tracks, you got Trial by Fire, Into the Pit, The Preacher, um, A Day of Reckoning, some, you know, some of the, uh, some of the fan, a lot of fan favorites are definitely on this. And, uh, yeah, like I said, thrash classic, not really much else that needs to be said. Testament, The New Order. Oh, here we go. All right. Last album, guys. This is Them with, uh, what's this? Yeah, Sweet Hollow. This was my number one album uh, for 2016. I cannot believe how fucking good this was. If you enjoy King Diamond and Merciful Fate, check this out. You will love the piss out of this. Like... No question. Or at least, you should. And, but that's not to say that these guys are a King Diamond ripoff. Because they're definitely not. There is so much more going on with this band than just King Diamond worship. Although, they did start out as a King Diamond uh, tribute band. 
Um, the vocals are very similar to King Diamond, but it just, it really doesn't come off like a clone. You'll have to listen to it for yourself and see what I mean, but, um, it's a super group project. I can't, I can't, I don't know the members too, too well, but they're all, they've all been in, uh, bands that are pretty well known. But, uh, off the top of my head, sorry, I can't really think of them right now. But, uh, it's their debut album, and, oh my god, I was just so impressed when I heard this. It's just, it's basically just heavy metal, um, there's some speed metal and some thrash in there, there's uh, definitely some progressive, uh, elements in here, and just every song is so catchy. Very sing-along choruses, like you would, uh, you know, like with King Diamond and Merciful Fate, and, ah. Uh, I just, I can't say enough good things about this album. Um, man, yeah. This album is just amazing. Uh, like I said, every single song is just incredibly catchy. Um, awesome riffs. Uh, great solos and guitar melodies. Uh, you know, the musicianship of these guys is just outstanding. Um, yeah. If you haven't heard of these guys, them, please go check this out. If there's anything out of this CD collection today that I want you to check out more than anything, it's definitely these guys. So, um, it's a concept album, and again, similar to King Diamond, it's that creepy horror story uh, concept. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get into the story. If you want to know about the story, you know, look it up, read the lyrics and stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, show this band some support, because they deserve it, and I would... I really hope I get to see these guys live someday, but, um, yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Like I said, this was my number one album for 2016, easily the thing that I listened to the most out of everything that year. Um, some standout tracks, uh, you got Forever Burns, uh, let's see, it's kind of hard for me to read these, and I should, Dead of Night, uh, the Crimson Corpse. Uh, why is it so hard to read these? Blood from Blood. Sorry. Um, yeah, just just go check this. Out. Yeah, go check this out, please. Them Sweet Hollow. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah. That will do it for today. You guys take care. See ya.